Now, when lockdown did occur, loads of these mutual aid groups popped up, didn't they? Pretty much every community has got one, and most of them are centred around Facebook. And the idea is that they collected together lots of people who were willing to help out those in their community, and then they looked for people to help and and basically match people up with the jobs that needed doing. And so uh, people might post, oh, I need this doing or I, I need that doing. And then, you know, five or six other people would say, oh, I can, I can help you uh, with that. And this kind of thing then has become the way that we have tackled lockdown, hasn't it? And so many of these groups have been really, really successful. However, there's a new twist on all of this, and uh, it is called Help My Street. And it's a new profit, non-profit company which has been launched in Nottingham to try to do a very similar kind of thing, but with one distinct difference. To tell you about it, Mark Hawkins is here now. Hello, Mark. Morning to you. Hi, good morning, Andy. So what's different between the Facebook groups that we all we all know, love and are maybe part of and what you're doing? Well, good morning. Firstly, thanks for having me on your on your show. Um, I mean, Facebook's obviously tremendously successful and adaptable and used in used in all all walks of life. Um, but if I can start with a quick anecdote, when all this happened, I heard you talking about the last normal thing you did back in back in March. And you know, that was going to the office, not very exciting, but going to the office for me. But when the office got shut, we all got sent home and the schools got shut, we all wanted to do something. And uh, my wife volunteered for one of these sort of pop-up groups. And I must stress, it was really early days. But in those early days, a lady from Bristol posted that she needed help with her elderly parents in Nottingham. And that information about her parents stayed on that Facebook page all day. My wife said she'd go and pick up the groceries, which was the task. And the £10 basket grew to £30. And then when she went to the to deliver it, somebody had deleted all the details of the Facebook group. So this sort of spiraled a little bit. When she eventually got back in touch, she delivered the groceries. Um, the lady, the couple were very grateful, which is wonderful, but they were probably receiving the third or fourth package that day. Oh, so lots and of people so, had gone to help. Right, and I think that sums up, everyone's so enthusiastic, everyone, I believe so many people are happy to help. But Facebook just isn't really designed for it. It doesn't really check that the people are who they say they are. It doesn't really protect people's data. It doesn't really make sure that the important tasks don't get lost in a, in a chain of chat or a chain of distractions. So at that point, I went out and talked to a lot of volunteers and a lot of organizers, listened to what they needed. And we decided at that point that maybe there is a chance to build a platform that can be purpose-built for, for what this group of amazing people need. And what did they tell you they needed? Because presumably you then needed to, to speak to them about what it was that they needed. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so it's a few different bits. Firstly, we wanted to build an, a simple ID check-in so that you know who people say they are. You don't know that they're necessarily good people, but we wanted to have that check that check the person who was signing up did match to their driving license, to their passport, and there's a simple check which you can do holding your phone to your face. Um, they wanted to have a task management piece, so something that meant when people requested help, it didn't get lost in a sort of a, a big sea of either WhatsApps or, or Facebooks. And it also needed to protect data. So my background is I run a small team of um, people working in healthcare analytics with the NHS in Nottingham. And so we're always obsessed about data security. And so we wanted to make sure that, you know, you do need to have personal information in this in this platform because you need to get in touch with people. It's about real people. But a big part of our design is let's only share that information with people who really need to do it, to really need to see that information to get that task done. So you started working on, on something that would do all this, a platform, as you called it, that would, that would do all yeah. of this, um, presumably yeah, all, the, all those weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, so uh, where are we now? So, perfect. Yeah, we started about seven or eight weeks ago from, from nothing. Um, a team, our core team was about eight people, but it quickly grew with volunteers to about 30. So our own sort of volunteering project. And we're now live, so... We're going to launch in Nottingham in the East Midlands this week. Um, but if people are listening, we're, we're live today, so they can go to the site today. Um, and if there are people who need help or know of people who need help in the East Midlands, please use the site to request help if they're happy to help. Um, and you can do as little or as much as, as you want. You'll always be in control of the work you do. So please, please sign up. And then the best group almost that we'd love to find are if you're an established group, you might be a church, a mosque, a synagogue, a sports club, um, maybe a school parents association. If you are already organised or you want to get organised, this is hopefully the platform that will make it really easy for you. And um, what about the groups that have already existed? Have you 
seen whether it is what they want. Are any of them prepared to move over to what you're offering? Yeah, absolutely. We've been, I mean, we spoke to a lot of them initially, and then we've been working with a number of groups, one in South Yorkshire, one in, in Nottinghamshire, in Kimberley, uh, one in Eastbourne. And they've been helping us with the design because, you know, things like what categories have helped you put on, they've, they've helped us figure out that we need groceries, we need prescriptions, we need maybe dog walking. Um, there's two interesting ones that are emerging. One is um, around these sewing clubs. So there's a lot of sewing clubs now emerging where they're actually uh, making face masks, face coverings for other people. So even people that are stuck at home can, can contribute. Um, and then the other might be around sort of help, helping with homeschooling. I think there's probably a lot of parents that are feeling a bit frazzled at the minute, but there might be perhaps an elderly generation of grandparents who might have a bit more patience and happy to talk about, I don't know, some maths or some languages or some history, um, and they can contribute back as well. So it's all about just neighbourhoods helping neighbourhoods, neighbours helping neighbours. Mark, thank you. Mark Hawkins on BBC Radio Nottingham from Help My Street, which is this new website which is designed especially, him and his team, designed especially to deal with the kind of needs that everyone has at the moment, but to do do it perhaps better than it's been done before. You're listening to BBC Radio Nottingham. It-